We're here at Castle Andinus, one of the largest and most impressive hill forts in all of Cornwall. This lonesome moor was an important focus for settlement, trading, folklore and local fascination for over three and a half thousand years. Harry Tedge is going to come with us, help us have a look around and explain some Cornish words. From this vantage point, we can see across Cornwall for miles around. This view was especially important all the way back in time to our prehistoric ancestors, and from the ground, whilst it might look like a beautiful, unspoilt and empty landscape, we can see a whole different story start to appear if we take a different view. This is one of two Bronze Age barrows. They're the oldest features we know about here at Castle Andinus. A barrow is a mound, which likely had a ritual purpose and could have contained the grave of an important person. These two barrows date from around 2000 to 1500 BC. That's around the same time as the ancient Egyptians were building pyramids. There are three huge defensive banks and ditches, and even traces of a fourth. These were built by Iron Age people, about a thousand years after the Bronze Age barrows. There's a smaller fourth bank as well, which might be a hilltop enclosure dating back from a late Bronze Age or earlier Iron Age settlement. Archaeological evidence shows that people were using Castle Andinus between 400 BC and 150 AD, likely for community gatherings such as ceremonies or trading. They would have been Celts, a group made up of many different tribes who gradually migrated to the British Isles around this time. They lived in small settlements farming crops and animals. Villagers might also have retreated to this hill fort if their settlements were ever attacked, which has a spring to the north, so they weren't short of water. I'm standing in the original entranceway on the southwest side, which once upon a time would have had a cobbled surface to protect from constant use by feet, hooves and wheels. An American professor who excavated the site in the 1960s found the post holes of a circular timber house near here, as well as piles of sling stones and some shards of pottery. Myth and legend tell us that Castle Andinus was an important place in medieval times. King Arthur was a legendary British leader, who according to medieval histories defended Britain against Saxon invaders in the early 6th century. Castle Andinus was said to be King Arthur's hunting lodge, with Gosmoor to the south, his favourite hunting ground. A stone bearing the hoof prints of King Arthur's horse are said to be in nearby St Colum. Can you picture King Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table riding across the nearby moor? From legendary kings to the English Civil War, in March 1646, the remnants of the Royalist Army camped near here for two nights. They held a council of war, and it was decided that they would surrender to the parliamentarians. And a few days later, they surrendered at Tresillium Bridge near Truro. There's a darker side to Castle Andinus too. In 1671, John Trehenban from St. Colum was sentenced to be starved to death in a cage within the castle's rings for murdering two girls. Local people used to say that if you ran around the stone his cage was balanced on 50 times, you would hear his chains rattle. And around 1798, Cornish historian Samuel Drew saw a ghostly army in the sky above Castle Andinus. More recently, there was also a Wolfram mine here, which worked from 1917 to 1958. If we could go underground, you'd be able to see hundreds of metres of tunnels. Although the mine closed in 1958, there may still be as much as 1,000 tonnes of ore still underneath Castle Andinus. These blocks in the edge of the top rampart are the remains of a Blondin pylon. This is an aerial transportation system that carried the Wolfram ore from the mine to the processing plant. As you can see, Castle Andinus is far from empty. 
Looking carefully from above and below, from inside and out, we can see how important it's been in the lives of ordinary people, armies, kings, murderers and miners across three and a half thousand years of history. So despite all its many uses over this incredible amount of time, one thing hasn't changed at Castle Andinus, the amazing view.